You're listening to the KSO Show. This will be our Big 12 and Kansas State Ultimate Preview episode. And if you're listening to this, it's probably Wednesday or Thursday. I haven't really decided which day it is. We're either two days from the season or three from when hopefully we see Kansas State defeat Stanford in the season opener inside Jerry World. But we're going to go through our standings. I'm Derek Young. I'm joined by Grant Flanders, and we're going to go 10 to 1 our Big 12 standings, and we'll probably try to zip through this to make it still under 10 or 12 minutes, but no promises. 10th place, I'm guessing, no surprises, I'm going with the Kansas Jayhawks. Yeah, we should have been, we should have said, let's say it together now. Hey. Kansas Jayhawks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't have to dive into too much of the reasonings for, for either spot, um, any spot. Kansas was last place in every offensive and defensive statistical category a year ago, aside from turnovers. I think Lance Leipold is a great hire. I do think that they're going to be competent and actually organized and actually prepared each Saturday. So it won't look like a complete disaster, but it's still going to be ugly because he doesn't have the pieces in place and they probably lost their, the, the good players that they did have. No, uh, that's the thing. Yeah, like Leopold is going to come in and, and I think be a solid coach, but not year one. <laughs> not I mean, year one he'll do what he has to do, but his team is not going to be, go from – you know, what's been an awful program for years and years and years to instant success. Um, he, he might surprise some people here and there with some wins, um, maybe. But that's the thing. Even one or two wins could be considered a surprise because KU could also be looked at as losing every single game. So. Yeah, well, they didn't win a game last year. <laughs> ninth, ninth place. Um, I know most have Texas Tech here. I'm not one of those. I actually believe it's going to be Baylor in ninth. Look, I kind of like Dave Aranda, the guy, and I do think that he is, he has to be a good defensive coach. He was kind of the architect of some good defenses at LSU and Wisconsin. There are some questions about what his in-game adjustments do look like. Um, maybe not the techniques and, and the coaching and the development that he's able to do week to week, but, but the schemes and in-game adjustments have some question in. They really are kind of like a, they're in the water without a paddle when it comes to quarterback. They just announced who their quarterback is, and Jerry Bohannon, and I think he's he's an athletic type of guy. I just don't think he's enough for their offense to feel good about. Um, I, have, I have some real questions for Baylor this year. I I, under, I hear you on that. I, I do too because, I mean, I'll say it, they're my third to last. Second to last place is, I guess, ninth would be Texas Tech. I do go with Texas Tech. Question, um, you know, you said you like Arnanda, but, you know, it's first year for him and everything. Um, Wells, this is his second, or this is his third season. Third year, Matt Wells was hired senior year as Chris Kleiman. This is his second year for Dave Miranda. And second year for Dave Miranda, or you're right. If we, we didn't get to meet him as much last year at all, really, because of COVID. So that slipped my mind. But yes, and Matt Wells, he's into year three and already question marks about his performance and, and how well he has done um, from a recruiting and team standpoint. So it'll be interesting to see how the season goes. Could be instant if he's not already on the hot seat. Hot seat if he, if my prediction ends up being right. But I just have a hard time seeing Texas Tech, um, you know, with not many answers. Uh, you know, no more Alan Bowman. Um, just a, a lot of question marks for Texas Tech. And to me, it's easy to see that they could end up in that ninth place spot. Yeah, he is on the hot seat. He almost was Matt Wolf was almost yeah, out after exactly. last season. I do have Texas Tech eighth for a lot of the reasons that you've listed. The reason why I have them nudged ahead of Baylor just a bit is to, is that I I don't think he is like the extreme pro prospect that some have kind of opened about in Tyler Show, the transfer from Oregon. But I do think they have a better answer at quarterback than Baylor, which is why I have Tech eighth, Baylor ninth. And that's understandable for sure. I get I can totally understand that. But Baylor to me comes down to liking. That coach, that coach to me is really good. Yes, it's only his second season, but I think he instills a confidence just talking to him that makes me feel like if, if there's players that get to be around that kind of guy every day, that can do something for you and win you a couple games. Now we're both to number seven. And my number seven is going to be a surprise because this is me. Um, not believing in a team nearly as much as everyone else does. I know that maybe longevity and consistency and just the tradition and not wanting to count out this coach or this program, I can understand that. But to me, there just isn't a giant reason to really like Oklahoma State this year, aside from their really good defense. I understand that they're going to have a really good defense, but having a really good defense 
in a questionable offense in this league doesn't really get you a whole lot because everybody can score at least a little bit. And then they can at least score a little bit on every defense regardless of how good that it is most of the time. So having an elite defense and a pedestrian offense, which is kind of what I'm anticipating from Oklahoma State this season, I just don't know if that's a good combination in the Big 12 to have. I think that makes you an average program, mostly in the Big 12. So I have Oklahoma State seventh. People say, yeah, well, they lost Chuba Hubbard, they lost Tyler Wallace, but they still have a good running back. They still have Spencer Sanders. I'm not a big believer in Spencer Sanders. So I have Oklahoma State seventh. I don't think you can be a big believer in Spencer Sanders. And I'll get to Oklahoma State in a second because I don't have them seventh, but close. I have West Virginia seventh. I think they're a team that, um, Neil Brown's, a, I like him as a coach, but another third year guy that, it's going to be interesting to see if he can turn the corner. I don't know um, what they're going to have an answer for besides I think they're going to be really good on the ground with Levy Brown. Uh, besides that, I just don't even know really what to get excited about with West Virginia. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably differ quite a bit there. I, yes. do, I do like the uh. Mountaineers quite a bit. At the sixth spot, I actually have the Texas Longhorns. I know that you have them <laughs> uh, a little bit higher, but... Now, I, I think that there's an out, now maybe I shouldn't say outside chance. I think there's a decent chance that Steve Sarkeesian's going to have a pretty good level of success in Texas. It's hard not to. You have everything at your disposal. I know people question because of the way things ended for him at Washington. Um, and at, Well, actually, it was at USC, of course. And then, But I think being in the Nick Saban coaching school does help, help a guy, and I do think he put together a pretty quality staff, has a modernized offense, which is the direction you kind of want to go, especially – if you are a Texas, so I like Texas long term. This year, I think there's going to be some turbulence for Sarkeesian as he tries to institute everything that he wants to and and gets used to a conference that he's never been in and all the stuff of that nature. And I, and I think it's kind of a decent Big 12 this season, at least in the middle or, or towards the top. So I had Texas six, and I'm, some of that too is I just don't love the way their their schedule unfolds. I think Kansas State beats them this year in the final game of the season. Everyone's going there. I mean, they're going to have a big old t target on their chest too. So I have Texas six. Music to my ears, and that's what I want to happen. I really hope. Um, and I do also know you're really smart, so I think that's a smart call. And unfortunately, my dumb mind is taking me the other direction. But um, six, I'm going with Oklahoma State. Uh, similar reasons to why you had them seventh. I'm just not sold on Spencer Sanders. Yeah. And if I were, he wouldn't have ever gotten benched for Illingsworth or whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, Shane Illingsworth. And, yes. And, 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 you know, we don't have to touch on Oklahoma State much more no. since we're both in agreement there. But, I mean, <laughs> Kansas State should have beat them last year at home. It, it, was, no, a, it was a Will Howard fumble at the end that, that would have got him. And that was a Kansas State team that was really, you know, flailing at that point. Yep. So, yeah, not a whole lot of faith in Oklahoma State by either of us. So, we're in agreement there. I have him seventh. Flando has them sixth, and those are Big 12 standings. Five, this is a team you didn't really have too high. You had West Virginia at seven. I had West yeah. Virginia at five. I think Jared Deggy is a decent quarterback. I think L.D. Brown is it, is it L.D. or Letty? Letty. Yep. Yeah, Letty LD's Brown. L.D.'s Oak State. Okay, yep. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get those two mixed up. Letty Brown's a really good running back. He actually wreaked havoc on Kansas State yeah. quite a bit. I think Neil Brown's a good coach. Their schedule's kind of trickier than I thought it would be, or I might actually like them even more, put them in maybe the top three or the top four. They've been a thorn in the Wildcat side for, geez, four or five, six years now. So you got to be watching out for the Mountaineers. I have them fifth. Fifth is our team, the team that we cover. I'm going Kansas State. Um, I, you know, I love saying 15-0. and 0. I love, you know, as a fan. <laughs> I am a fan too. So when, when I get to those times and I think, yes, this team could really do it. Um, and as a journalist, I want to take a step back and, and assess situations. And I think – Potentially, a year from two, a year or two from now, this climbing led team could end up being a top three Big Twelve team, winning you know Big Twelve championships. This season, I'm not quite there just yet, but I still see them as a middle of the pack team. I see K State. I see the potential they have, and the only thing that keeps me from going higher with them, and it might be petty, and maybe it gets figured out, and maybe there's nothing wrong with it. But the linebacker situation, what's going to happen? Um, what's going to happen one time when Fletcher or Green goes out with an injury? Are they going to have enough? Um, I think they've talked plenty about um, you know Nick Allen and the strides he has taken 
Um, not to make this all linebacker based, but that is really the one reservation I have on this roster and makes me think um, that if they had studs there, if they had a little bit more depth there, maybe this team could win the Big 12 as soon as this season. But I'm going to hold off and say I see them finishing middle of the road, middle of the pack, fifth in the Big 12. I got Kansas State fourth, and that's our next spot. Um, I do have question marks about the defense. Um, I would, to be honest, I'm a little tempted to go higher for Kansas State, but I'm going to, you know, re- refrain from doing so. Do it. Just, just not to go completely over the board. Everyone knows. We'll touch on it after we go one through ten here, but everyone knows the record I expect. But for me, I got them fourth. Can go higher just because a rocky first part of the schedule and some question marks still on the defensive side of the ball. Understandable. So where we're at, uh, my fourth is uh, TCU. <laughs> this. Obviously, already, um, I'm going to make an audible. I'm actually putting TCU third, Texas fourth. Um, uh, Texas, to me, is a team where I struggle also saying that they could be top three. I almost just did it, but then uh, your points were really good. I mean, Sarkeesian is just, you know, that kind of uh, – I obviously also see a lot of potential in what he's doing. And if they get fourth, that'd be really solid for a foundation that he's building. And I think he can. I think I think Sarkeesian's the best coach they've had come through there um, in a long, long time, probably since Mac Brown. I mean, we'll see if it's true. We'll see if he lives up to the hype. Um, but I was never super high on, on their hires before. But getting around Sarkeesian, I, I am high on this hire for, for them. I don't like Texas. I, you know, I, I wish I, and I hope that they don't do well. But part of me just thinks that they could have a season in the first year where Sarkeesian gets their guys together good enough, well enough to find it, them slipping in there at fourth place. All righty, time for the top three. And if once we say number three, everyone will know each of our Big Fall Championships games. Number three for me, I'm probably going to get some cheers. I can, I can already hear the people listening to this kind of say, yeah, because he, he, he already he's not having them in the Big 12 championship game. My number three is Iowa State. I'm just not ready to give them the, the respect that everyone nationally is. Um, they did have a great season in 2020. Their trajectory looks good under Matt Campbell. I think some of that is a little, I think they're, they're jumping on the bandwagon a little too quick. I think they're making too much of last season mm-hmm. as well. Um, I like Brock Purdy. I don't love Brock Purdy. I do love their defense. I don't love their offense. I think a third place finish is about still where Iowa State is as a program. I have TCU. Um, Gary Patterson, I think, is kind of coming up on it, like the twilight of his career. Um, I think this is a season that dictates whether he continues on or it's kind of uh, a few more seasons he burns out. Because uh, I could see this team being the really talented, a TCU team that has uh, probably one of the most talented teams in the Big 12. The question is if Gary Patterson can handle that and maneuver it in a way where he's, again, a really good defensive mind, but also making plays on the offensive side of the ball. We'll see if that comes to fruition. I have them third place. I got the Frogs number two. I, I've, I've kind of been long in the, in the mindset and the, the opinion, as many that are listening to this know, that I'm not a real big fan of the – recent coaching of Gary Patterson. I think he's been a very, very average football coach in game or otherwise in the last four or five years. They just, then that's probably why the results have been what they have. But smart, and I know not, this isn't a popular opinion, especially amongst fans, but there's a lot of smart football people out there that I do, that I do trust. And I have to admit that I don't necessarily see it, but I do trust them. And they do think that Max Dugan is better than what many think he is and that he has been held down a little bit by the talent at the skill position in Fort Worth. Well, the talent is up at the skill position in Fort Worth for this season. So there will be no more excuses for Max Dugan if they are unable to compete at a high level this season. I'm going to assume that they will compete at a high level season. And I'm not saying this is his swan song, but this will probably be the last like rise to the occasion season that we see from Gary Patterson in his coaching career, in my opinion. Although, you know, without Texas or Oklahoma in the future, maybe they'll have a better shot at, at staying relevant. But I think this will be 
one of the final like big big seasons we see from TCU. I think they're going to be playing in Arlington um, this year, obviously against my number one Oklahoma, and I'll just we might as well do both at the same time here. I think Oklahoma is the best team in the Big 12. They have been for a lot of years already. I think, that, and I do, just like everyone else, mostly that has spoken on them, think this is the best Oklahoma team that Lincoln Riley has assembled. And and I'll just say it right now, too, I think Oklahoma is going to win the national title. You know, I, and you're not crazy for saying that. I think uh, it's a rational thing to to believe, and I think I would probably pick them to win the national title, too. Obviously, they're not... They're my number one as well. Um, you know, Spencer Rattler, uh, primed to have a, probably a breakout season last year. You know, he was up and down, but showed massive potential. Um, this season, he could have an amazing season and absolutely win a national title. Um, Iowa State's obviously my number two. I just really like Campbell as a coach. Um, you know, I think he's really, really good. I think. You're, you said the defense is really good. That's going to be key. Uh, Mike Crow's on that end of the ball is going to be really key. Um, Brees Hall on the offensive end of the ball is going to be major. I think he's the best, one of the best players in the league um, offensively. He's just an explosive, explosive running back. On top of having just, uh, yeah, I just think they do have a really complete team. No, I'm not sold on Brock Purdy either, but... I am I, I am holding out hope or not hope but I am holding out you know just the belief that he could end up being what he has been uh, talked up to be in the past as a guy that is a accurate passer down the field because you know he has shown that he can not make the right decisions if he can get that figured out they could be really good if not they could flutter but regardless I I think this is a top three team. I put him at two because I think Matt Campbell is just a touch better, more prepared, and ready to go coach than what uh, Gary Patterson is in Fort Worth. Yeah, that's fair. Now we'll move on before we close this up to what we expect from Kansas State this year. My prediction, and I made this clear on other platforms and mediums, I ex- I'm predicting a 9-3 and three Kansas State season, and that will involve – going unscathed with a non-conference play, including wins over Stanford, Southern Illinois, and Nevada. The the tricky part of the beginning of the Big 12 slate, I do think, bites them. Even though I don't, even though I had Oklahoma State 7th, I do think they're going to lose to Oklahoma State once again in Stillwater. I also think they'll lose to Oklahoma and not win um, that contest for the third year in a row. So those are two of the losses, but I do think they beat Iowa State, third Big 12 game. I think Kansas State beats the Cyclones inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium in Manhattan. Um, and so that gives them the four and two start that they need. And I think Texas Tech's right after that, which will put them at five and two. I don't think they lose again until they play TCU at home. I do think the Frogs, and obviously I think the Frogs are going to have a good season. I have them finish second mm-hmm. in the Big 12. So I think TCU beats K State in Manhattan. But Kansas State winds up, I think that would put them five and three. And then they win their last four games, including a road win at Texas to finish the regular season at nine and three. It's a really good breakdown that you you broke down, and uh, yeah, you have them finishing nine and three. I mean, I, I see more of a seven and five finish. Um, I see wins against Stanford, a tight one against Nevada. I, I think they come out of non-conference play unscathed. I agree. They go to uh, Oklahoma. I think they find one win out of those three, and I'll say they be, do beat Oklahoma State to start the year. But, um, you know, go on to lose to Oklahoma and Iowa State the two games after that. So ha- that has them at uh, f- what four and two through six games. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry. I- I'm getting mixed up there. Let me just go through this again. They win against Stanford, win against Southern Illinois. The Nevada game is actually where I do have them taking a loss. I do think one of these non-com games is going to trip them up. Um, and I think Nevada could take them out. Oklahoma State is a win. They come back. They take care of business in Stillwater. They're at 3-1 uh, and one overall. They lose to Oklahoma. That's 3-2. and two. Lose to Iowa State, 3-3. Three and three. Then you're looking at a, a time where they beat Texas Tech. To make it four and three, a lose to TCU four and four, beat Kansas five and four. I think they can beat West Virginia at home and go uh, 
six and four at that point, and then Baylor, that's a win, seven and four, and lost to Texas to make it seven and five overall. All righty, those are our <laughs> predictions. That's Grant Flanders making the call at seven and five. I have the Wildcats nine and three, with significant wins over Texas and Iowa State, but tripped up by Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. And TCU, I have the Cats fourth. Plano has them fifth. I have Oklahoma over TCU in the Big 12 title game. Plano is Oklahoma over Iowa State. That's our preview show. You've been listening to the KSO Show for Flando. I'm Derek Young. Tell your friends.